So this is basically a Mars direct mission executed in KSP, so do not direct. Those uh, arrow brakes are there for control because uh, the usual teraphins didn't fit and I had to discard uh, very soon this fairing because it's very heavy, mainly too heavy for its, uh, its actual use. But anyway, this is uh, the tuna return vehicle as I call it. It's a uh, uh, self uh, how to say self filling uh, thing so it can fill its own tags so uh, it uh, flies there uh, empty just uh, uh, as uh, the earth return vehicle would uh, do in a in a Mars direct mission and as in the real mission we have to launch two spacecraft one uh, with the empty return vehicle and it will fill itself on site and the other one with the crew normally this would uh, happen uh, at the second launch window mm, but here I was quite uh, impatient the thing is uh, I messed up the uh, ascent trajectory so uh, what happened uh, is that it was too shallow and it consumed too much fuel I know that it can go uh, into orbit or almost into orbit but it was uh, uh, worse than that so I had to use the fuel in the last stage and that is reserved for the injection burn and uh, maneuvering around Duna because it needs to do a precise pinpoint landing next to the other uh, craft and that is very hard especially with the new atmosphere of Duna so 50 kilometers is the 42 and it has higher drag uh, than it used to so uh, the pressure is the same but it behaves differently and while carbine became easier to escape uh, do not I think it's somewhat harder but maybe it's just me I didn't measure it but it feels so because even at 40 kilometers you can feel the drag so yeah no view for the guys because there are they are MKs in this uh, um, fairing that's for their own protection because this will have to survive re-entry but yeah actually re-entry is quite nerved in 102 so uh, maybe it's, it's useless but anyway the first uh, vehicle is arriving I have to do an arrow capture and those air brakes are there for the stabilization and uh, the controlling of uh, the deceleration in this phase and also a third function is to help the burnt out stage to separate because it has uh, greater drag than the vehicle. But anyway, I have to land in uh, one of these nine uh, smooth flat planes because it is very high. The center of mass uh, is lower than you would think because the top part is empty, but even then, it's. Uh, it's quite high uh, uh, because it can easily topple over so I need a very horizontal landing site and that is kind of uh, lag based because mm, it really doesn't have enough delta V to correct to somewhere else it can just land wherever it hits a few seconds burn of the engines Mm, it, it can smooth its landing but it, uh, this is all it can do so after uh, opening the ladders and the solar panels it's ready for action mm, the mining of the resource so the minerals meanwhile uh, checking on the other one it's going nicely uh, this is the hard part of this uh, I have to always keep these two crafts in mind these solar panels are strange because they happen to work on dark energy or neutrinos or, or x-rays or I don't know what but they work uh, on the night side of the planet too so uh, with this uh, resource mining you have to uh, keep in mind that uh, different times of the day different uh, flux of uh, solar energy is available so you have to be really careful uh, when uh, to use your devices so these mm, drills and uh, the, the resource converter 
but this is a boring stuff. You have to do it for several days. Maybe with more straw panels it would be better, but uh, there is no place to fit on this. I mean, while the other craft is approaching, you have to keep that in mind. Yeah, so as I explained, it should be in a different launch window, but I didn't want to wait that long, and it's uh, even more complicated that way. Because in reality, we, ha we have to be sure that the, the, the return vehicle is, is uh, filled with fuel and it's ready uh, when, when we send the crew. We don't want them to get stranded there. But uh, this is KSP, so I can uh, risk a few kerbals. Yeah, so it's uh, time for action uh, for the one-way trip vehicle. It didn't have that much fuel as I expected it uh, to have because I mm, had this problem with the ascent trajectory. Um, anyway, aero capture as usual. Well, not really as usual, because I'm still not accustomed to this new atmosphere. So, for example, I used to do air capture on 12 kilometers on Duna. Now, with 25 kilometers, it's around OK. So, it's, it's completely different. It behaves completely diff differently. So, the point here is uh, to have a trajectory which is uh, very close to our landed vehicle there and I'm usually quite good at the cross, cross track distance but uh, regulating the longitudinal component of the speed is very hard I do not really have uh, that much practice uh, with pinpoint landings uh, on Duna and not to mention that uh, the atmosphere is different as it used to be so it, it was really hard so you probably know but I had to try it several times so yeah th that is one of the few cases when I had to cut those uh, failed attempts I usually do not cut these but I mean either I put them in or or I do a complete uh, course without any reloads and whatsoever once I'm good enough but uh, now this is this this was a long enough trip and co very complicated and so on. So uh, not to mention that the game crashed several times because uh, of this capsule. Unfortunately, it's dark, but it shattered the engine and then uh, with the uh, this aero shell fairing, uh, the remaining part almost hit me. And this is a hitchhiker container with few engines and a probe body. And I landed around 800 meters uh, from the other vehicle. It could have been better, but yeah, this was already a fifth or sixth try, and I didn't want to do any more, especially with these crashes. I don't know what causes them, but it's not really. So, anyway, uh, I sent the jab to inspect uh, the return vehicle, and I realized I forgot. Uh, to plant the flag, so after that, the second guy mm, did that. And with the third guy, I also realized that I forgot to discard this uh, uh, parachute part, and now the stop docking port is exposed. It flew a few kilometers until it crashed. So it has a, a top docking port and two side docking ports. Maybe something can move this later on if it's necessary. It is out of science instrument. So yes, so now everybody is there and happy uh, in this tower. Just filled in everything perfectly. But I still have to wait uh, for the launch window. Actually this uh, return vehicle has a lot of uh, Delta V, much more than needed. Uh, so maybe it won't be necessary, but uh, as before, uh, yeah, th this is uh, uh, the scaffolding that the uh, I discarded and those uh, separatrons were there uh, to accelerate uh, the return vehicle very fast from the platform so that it doesn't uh, get burned 
burned uh, so no damage uh, on the platform this way so the thing is uh, this has uh, quite a lot of delta V but I messed up in this uh, ascent uh, trajectory also it was also too shallow and uh, yeah, it had uh, less than I wanted to it had uh, uh, enough to make a complete circularization and uh, a designated pinpoint landing so uh, but it really doesn't matter uh, the stuff that's on it uh, in the top part that fairing is there basically it looks more like a rocket that way it's very heavy one ton or so um, but it hides uh, the, all the instrumentation that uh, moves this and also four uh, air brakes and that's uh, and that uh, those air brakes are there to help it stabilize because the other part uh, the other side uh, has a heat shield so it can survive very uh, tough uh, re-entries with the air brakes uh, and the heat shield but with 102 as the reentry is not uh, really that tough so it's probably unnecessary but it looks more like a, a spaceship that way so yes this was the uh, usual uh, injection burn and uh, yeah going there arrow capture Really cautious, it flipped over uh, here. So, I was really cautious with this uh, air braking. I uh, did the uh, complete circularization, I did uh, uh, the inclination fix. Uh, so, it was it was everything was right uh, for me to have a perfect landing at the space center. But at this point, it was almost three hours, uh, uh, and it was not uh, so. I, I became uh, impatient and uh, somehow I messed up and uh, I ended up uh, falling to the ocean uh, just uh, to the west uh, of this Africa like continent that houses uh, the KS uh, sea yep, maybe because it was dark so yeah discarding of these components and just uh, the hitchhiker container makes it back unfortunately it's dark again And land it in the water safely. Thanks for watching. Bye.